Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you so. Hallelujah. Blessed is your name, most high. Oh, Lord, we love you. You just sing and worship him. You can sing whatever words from your heart you want to sing. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship your holy name. Hallelujah. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I love you. Let's just sing this love song here. Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I love you. Hallelujah. Lord, I worship you. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I love you for everything you've done. For everything you've done, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Oh, Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I worship you. Lord, I love you for everything you've done. Hallelujah. Here's a good song. I want to sing this song for you. It's a beautiful song, okay? And I want you to just, you may have never heard it before, but I'm going to assure you, you can join right in with me as I sing. He rabavan and bang don and bayran. Zere bever and dara zara dera. Gora be prima mando sarana mendera mane. Gera de manande manandera. Zalanan de la bayra mande rododora. Alleluia. Hidala manje koro mande rabar mande reber mande rotu. Jikara mama bando lo serre beber. Jere mama dan jala serre mende lo tu. Kure mende mala nande rabele promondo. Jere vade bra mama de promondo roso. Kubre mama dana nana bebre bebe beni chere bebe kishte leitu. Hallelujah. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses me from sin. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses me from sin. What a precious sacrifice. All oh, this price that God has paid. The precious blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus 
that cleanses me from sin. Oh my, oh the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses me from sin. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus. What a price that God has paid. What a price that God has paid. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses me from Hallelujah. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses me from sin. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus that cleanses me from sin. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus, what a price that God has paid. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, my ora babarista ya ya bora bakita yo to ya la mandia ro now see now see wasn't that now see wasn't that a beautiful song that the holy spirit birth yes see people don't understand the beauty of tongues of how that it excels into expressions that will bless men in their understanding it starts off, God the Holy Ghost blesses us in the Spirit. And Paul actually set everything up to where he said, what shall we do then? We will sing in the Spirit first. Then we will sing with the understanding. And it's the same way with we pray in the Spirit first. So that our being, our spirit, the realms of that which go beyond that which we've experienced and understand and know and, and can think and observe, begins to be activated by that which only God knows. Otherwise, you're stuck in a purely human condition, trying out of a human condition to interact with God. You'll never get anywhere that way. You'll never walk on the water there. You'll never understand what it means to live free from sin there. You'll never understand how to step into the manifest presence of God there. I'll tell you, there's so much joy, so much love, so much grace, so much goodness in the manifest presence of the Lord. I... You know, I was telling Richard yesterday and again this morning, there's so many of God's people that never have understood the manifest presence of the Lord. At least if they're not going to choose to walk in it continually, at least they need to be introduced. Most of you standing here today, you've been introduced to the manifest presence of the Lord. It's wonderful. And I can tell you right now, you can live in that all the time and it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. And you don't, all you need to do is accept what God has done because he'll change your ways. Somebody said, well, you've got to change your ways. You have to, look, God will change you. Oh, the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses me from sin. Oh, the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses me from sin. Oh, the blood of Jesus Christ, what a price that God has paid. Oh, the blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, the precious blood of Jesus Christ, my Lord. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father, for the anointing. You can be seated. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Well, this is our first service here in this new building, and we praise God for everybody who's labored so hard, worked so hard to make this happen. And it's going to take us a little bit of get used to the live sound that is in here. It's like this is a place you can sing. You just sing a cappella and have all the acoustic guitars going on anything else. But all of you look really good sitting there like that. My biggest, my biggest desire is to make sure that I see all of you seated in the realms of heaven. And my biggest desire, I'm going to tell you, I want, I want, I want you to be, I want you to be raptured in heaven right now. Somebody said, well, what do you believe about the rapture of the church? Somebody, I heard somebody say the other day, all oh, rapture is not in the Bible. No, it is in the Bible. It's catching away. Catching away is all over the Bible. Somebody said, well, what do you believe about, you know, when we're going to go to heaven? I just said, well, listen, I'm in heaven right now. I've already come into the kingdom of the dear son. I, I've left my life that was in this world, and I've stepped into a place where God the Father, through the working of the mercies of Jesus Christ, has translated me out of the kingdom of this world in the kingdom of your son. You know, if I could take everybody and have you spend a little time in China with me, you'd see a different witness, a different kind of people, because when they give their life to the Lord, they don't have another life. They don't have a job. They don't have an occupation. They just have Jesus. They, they left everything behind. Most of them are rural people anyways. And, of course, when they hear the gospel preached, they, they hear go in all the world and preach the gospel. So they do that. They believe you're supposed to do that. They don't think you're supposed to sit around and think about it. And so everybody just leaves family and home, jobs, and they go everywhere preach the gospel and that's why so many people are being saved by the power of the gospel right now in Asia because there's so many of God's people that are responding to the voice of the Lord not just sitting around thinking about it and arguing about what they believe and whatnot but they're rather they're just doing it and so we actually have going on right now and of course many of you've heard me say this again and again we have right now going on one of the greatest revivals that have ever taken place on the planet ever since the, since the days of Jesus happening right now in Asia and I've said over and again to the Lord, Lord, I just want to stay there. I just, please let me stay in Asia. Please let me stay in the Middle East. And the Lord has been very clear to me over and again, no, I'm, I, I'm, we're going to do something in, we're going to do something together in America. And, and hallelujah. And, and <laughs> praise God. I mean, Richard saw the, the map there yesterday. He said, yeah. And he just starts going off prophesying. said, you know what? We need to have a, we need to have it transparent so that in the back you can have little lights on where everybody's being sent. And, and I could just see the whole map completely lit up. And the beautiful thing of it is, is we don't see ourselves doing it by ourselves because we got a whole company of people that we with. Huh, Richard? We got a, it's crazy, we got a mighty army already. People, the people that God has set in place who know how to function on the anointing of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Who sold out to God. Hallelujah. Who just want the man of this president. I don't care nothing about nothing else. With total abandonment just going after God. And so now, Father's got people blowing the trumpet to rally the troops. And as people will hear, they'll even, they'll hear the joyful sound from heaven. They'll even forsake everything that belongs to their life in this world and come follow Jesus. Hallelujah. And following him in this realms of this glory and this realms of this anointing. You'll find the best life that there is. You'll find abundant life. It's unending life. It's immeasurable life. Hallelujah. And the beautiful thing of it is it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how much you know, how little you know. God invites everybody to come regardless of, of what's going on in your past. And come step in and have it right now. You don't have to wait till later. Some people sit in the shadows. Don't be Cain. Don't be Cain. Cain had as much opportunity as anybody else. Cain got stuck in his disappointment. He got stuck in his problem. He got stuck in his, in his own issues. And he went and simply do what the Lord told him to do. So there's a sacrifice. Offer it and you're going to be accepted too. When you get accepted. And today we, the sacrifice has been off, offered. But you and I, we have to take up the sacrifice. The sacrifice Jesus Christ has been offered. But you and I have to take up that sacrifice. And come boldly into this realm of divine glory. I mean, come boldly into the realm of all the fullness of God. I like standing right here. It reminds me of where I live. You know, I'm just like living in the light. Hallelujah. They said they were going to cover up. They said they are going to cover up the light. I said, you're not going to cover up the light. Put more light up there. If anything, don't cover it up. Love the light. I'm not, I'm not into darkness. I'm not into shadows. Nothing like that, you know. We just want to walk in the light as he's in the light. Because if you walk in the light as he's in the light, then you have fellowship with everybody like us. Hallelujah. 
and the blood of Jesus Christ continually cleanses us from all sin. Thank you, Jesus. Today, we invite you to come and connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. We invite you to come into this wonderful, glorious presence that he's given to everybody who's willing to receive. What a beautiful, what a wonderful realm. I want every one of you right now, I just, I want you to understand you don't have to try very hard. You don't have to work at it. You don't have to struggle. All you have to do is just receive. All you have to do is a sincere and honest heart to say, God, I'm just hungry for you. I want you. Shut everything else out. Push everything aside. All the thoughts, all the accusation, all the lies, all the torment, all the sickness, all the disease. Before Richard comes, I'm going to just spend just a few minutes just talking to you about the blessing of the Lord and having the blessing of the Lord on your life. And I want you to understand that from Genesis chapter 1 all the way through to Revelation 22, we, are, we hear about the blessing of God. Father has put his blessing upon our lives in such a way that I want to ultimately conclude real quickly with how he put his blessings on our life. But number, number one, I want to go back and I want to just want to highlight how he blessed the earth. He blessed it and it brought forth all kinds of good things and fruitful things. And he, he blessed the womb of, of Eve and she brought forth a, a child that had never been created before. And at that moment was created and created to live eternally. And, and then we see the whole progression of that blessing come to Abraham and Abraham was blessed of the Lord in such a way that he was blessed in, in, in every dimension, first and foremost in his relationship with the Father, where he could interact with God in a way that just makes me jealous and covetous for that. He was, God blessed him in every dimension of his life. He blessed him with, with riches. He blessed him with wealth. He, he blessed him with, as I said, more importantly, a position in the realms of divine glory than a position with men. All the blessing of the Lord. He, it's not something he got by his own strength or he got by his own power. Then the Lord says, he bless our bread and he bless our water and take sickness out of our mouth, out of our midst. We, when we look at the blessing of God, the blessing of God makes riches and, and makes rich and adds no sorrow with it. The blessing of the Lord makes rich and, and sometimes people just think about the material wealth. Don't think about the material wealth. I think that if you think riches and you immediately go to material wealth with it there's something wrong with that there's really something wrong with that because there's a far greater riches than just material wealth there's spiritual riches jesus was rich as as the eternal god he was rich and my goodness if you, you try to reduce that or minimize it on based based upon some monetary value you're really missing the point he was rich became poor for our sakes he was rich in everything that belongs to the realms of the, of the divine life that he himself as God has always possessed. He became poor for our sakes that through his poverty you and I might be made rich. Here we find the blessing of God once again takes sicknesses out of, say, take sickness out of our midst. God separated the, the, the tribe of Levi to stand and just bless the people in the name of the Lord. And with the blessing of the, of the, of the, of the Lord upon the people, he would send rain in abundance so that there would be plenty of grass in the field so that the beasts and the cattle and their flocks would get really fat and they'd have plenty to eat. He would give them both the early rain and the latter rain in the season so that all that they set their hand to do and all of their business would produce greatly. I'm telling you, the blessing of the Lord, you may not be raising cattle, you may not be, ra you may not be growing a crop, but whatever business that you are in, look at how God blesses the business. The blessing of God was upon Joseph. And look at what happened through Joseph's life. The whole world was blessed through him. Abraham was promised that the whole world would be blessed through him. The whole world would be blessed through his seed. And that seed that he was talking about is Christ Jesus. Now, I, I know my brethren in China want to make an argument that they truly are the lost tribe of Israel because there would be so many people in number from the seed of Abraham and they're the biggest uh, family group on the planet. But that's not what the Lord meant, you know. I'm not going to argue with my dear Chinese um, brethren, but what the Lord is talking about is all the people that would come in the kingdom be made a part of the family of God all through the new birth. You understand this? You understand? You don't have to be born of the seed of Abraham to be part of the family of God. You get to be born of the Spirit. Amen. Christ Jesus, the one seed that, that Paul talked about, Galatians chapter 3. It doesn't exclude anybody. Somebody said, ah, oh, you're preaching replacement theology. Replacement? Get out of here with those big words. Listen, I'm going to tell you right now, we ain't replacing nobody. 
We're just including everyone. God has taken away all the difference between everyone. He's brought everybody together in Christ Jesus so that we could all be blessed as one family standing right now as the family of God, our Heavenly Father, God being our God and being our Father, Jesus, our elder brother, Holy Spirit, our companion. I'm not making stuff up as I go. This isn't, some, this isn't something I downloaded from the internet so I could have a sermon to preach to you. I'm telling you about what's going, out, going on inside my life. <laughs> Hallelujah. And God wants going on inside your life. It's what he's ordained. It's what he's elected. It's what he chose. He, he's, got, he's given such a blessing. He said to us, I ordained you and called you to such blessing that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he will do it. What a relationship. We want the whole world to know about this kind of power with God. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Jesus. Takes sickness out of our midst. Blesses all that we do, everything that we put our hand to, so that it prosper. Over and again, we see what happens when the blessing of the Lord comes, when a womb is barren. It can be an Eli who's missed out on God, who's blind and overweight, who hasn't disciplined his son. But when he releases the blessing to someone, life is formed in a barren womb as it happened there with Hannah. I mean, the blessing of God. Anybody who has the blessing of God and the authority to bless, my goodness. What rich people we become. What, what, what desirable people we become. What a, what a blessing to the earth we become. When we bless and curse not, if there's anything that God's people need to grab a hold of, is they got to stop cursing themselves by cursing other people because all it does is put a curse on you. you God's in, God has ordained you to inherit a blessing. So bless and curse not so that you can inherit it. Keep your tongue from evil, your lips to speak no guile. Start walking around loving on people and talking good about people. If you don't have any good thing to say, don't say nothing at all. In Jesus' mighty name, it's the only way to live. That's who we are. We're called to bless in the name of the Lord. Not talk about the problems that we think we see because they probably aren't real anyway. It's just make-believe, just some lying accusation of Satan to discourage you, disappoint you, separate you, get you over into strife and envy and hatred. Don't go there. Come and live over here in this blessing where the joy and the love, <laughs> hallelujah. We're the fountain of life. Hallelujah. There's one thing that I don't like about this small room. If, we, if, we, if the anointing comes upon us and we're going to go running, there's not a big enough lap. But when we get out there, it's a much bigger place out there. And there it's about, we can handle about 2,000 people out there. Somebody said, how are you going to do that? Let's talk about the program. I'm going to tell you about the program. Here's the program. You touch heaven, let heaven touch you. Listen to what's going to happen. You touch heaven, let heaven touch you. Let the power of God be released through your life to where the signs, wonders, and miracles of manifest presence of Jesus can be seen in your life and upon your life in a greater way. And I guarantee you that this whole region is going to be saved. Listen, there, we live in imperialist times in so many different ways. But I can tell you the blessing of God keeps me safe. Those that abide in the secret place of the Almighty those that dwell in the presence of the Lord. I'm telling you, the safety, the shelter that is there, you, have, you fear nothing. We fear, we fear nothing because of the blessing of the Lord. And then I'm going to bring it to this and, and, and then close it and turn it over to, to my dear brother Richard. And the Lord says in Ephesians chapter 1, he says, He has blessed us with all spiritual, all spiritual blessings. See, somebody said, somebody don't like some people that, that have a problem with their finances being blessed, and I can't imagine why. That doesn't make any sense. Why would you, you know, you, you, want, well, you don't want your finances blessed. Well, why, you shouldn't want a promotion from your, from your boss ever again. Huh? Matter of fact, you should just go ahead and work for free. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I mean, you know, you don't need to eat. You don't need nothing. You know, you don't need no clothes. You don't need no place to stay. So that's all nonsense. We know that. We know that we, there needs to be a supply. And then if you're only thinking about yourself, you're only thinking about your own personal need, then you just need a little bit. But when you've got a heavenly vision and you're thinking about the need of the whole world and you're thinking about literally the hundreds of millions of orphans, you're thinking about the hundreds, uh, uh, the the, the the billions, or at least the hundreds of millions of people who've never heard the, the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, then you need a much bigger budget. 
And when he says he's blessed us with all spiritual blessings, spiritual is not confined to something that, that you, would, you would think of in terms of religious ideology. Spiritual is every dimension of our life. What happened to Abraham was a spiritual blessing which resulted in him having such wealth and greatness and purpose and place and position. God gives us purpose. He gives us place. He gives us position. He gives to us the ability to impact other people's lives. This is what Father has for us. The spiritual blessings, all spiritual, not some. I'm going to give you just one limited measure. I'm going to give you all spiritual blessings. Spiritual blessings will result in your body learning how to live where your body's not sick and diseased. Spiritual blessings will result in you learning to have all provision to supply all that you have need of right out of the treasure chest of His riches and glory. I said right out of the treasure chest, of, right out of the treasure chest of His riches and glory. Now, let me tell you how hard this is. Let me tell you how hard this is. This is all you have to do is with abandonment, is simply believe God and obey Him. If you just simply do what God tells you to do, you'll enjoy all of His blessings. All you have to do is just say, no, I'm not going to do it my way, Lord. I'm going to do it your way. I'm, I'm going to give myself to following you. And Papa will just load upon you daily, heap upon you daily. Huh? You'll find yourself prospering and being in health even as your soul prospers. Soul prosperity is not the only, only dimension of spiritual blessings. Health is a spiritual blessing. Amen. Prosperity in every dimension is a spiritual blessing. And when you look in the Bible and you, func and you focus on the blessings, which are, my goodness, there's probably 1,600 of them named. Just to cut it real, just, just just to cut it down, reduce it, try to get rid of redundancies. About sixteen hundred of them named in the Old Testament. Hallelujah, God. Hallelujah. No, oh, he daily he daily loadeth me with benefits. Huh? Problem is, though, people forget the benefits. If you forget forget not the benefits. If you don't forget the benefits, you're going to walk around giving thanks and praising him all day long. People forget the benefits and they think about all the fits. Okay, they, they think about all the problems and all the issues and all the things that they don't like that's happening. My goodness, my goodness. But listen, I'm going to tell you, turn your eyes to on, on Jesus. Hallelujah. My, 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 mother, my mother had a saying in, in, that I was raised with. Uh, just to know I've been redeemed makes me feel good. That's all I really need. I don't need anything else. And when Christ, when that's really what's going on in your life, then you're looking to the source of all spiritual blessings. Hallelujah. It, it, these things are coming out of the riches of His glory. He's blessing us with these things. Look, all it takes is a simple, the most simple, acts of bene, most simple acts of belief. And you're going to get healed today. There are people in here. You need to be healed. You've got, there's people here with, with physical problems. There's people here with mental problems. There's people here with spiritual problems. There's people here with, you know, various different, you know, issues that they're dealing with, uh, concerns, and uh, that, that they need to see it addressed and solved in, in, in direction. Father wants to give it to you. He wants to bless you today with everything that you have need of. He'll bless you right out of the riches of His glory. You have to participate. And all you have to do they just say, this is true, and I believe it, and I accept it. That's pretty much it. I accept what you're doing for me. I just think, and somebody said, how do I do that? How do I really do that? You begin to give thanks out of your heart. It's not just some rote thing that you would say with your mouth. Oh, I believe it. I receive it. I accept it. Whatever. You know, it's with thanksgiving. Lord, you're amazing. I really do believe this. And so because I really do believe it, it's more than just what I'm saying with my mouth. It's more than just some, you know, repeat after me. The, the, the things within the, the heart in your life begin to rise up and you begin to become so blessed in all that Father does for you and continually does for you. So I just want you to raise your hands towards heaven right now. And I want you to let Papa just touch you. I want you to let the Spirit of the Lord touch you. I want you to let the anointing of the Holy Ghost touch you so that you can receive all that you have. And hallelujah. And just by the simple willingness to lift your hands towards heaven and believe, that's all it takes. That's about it. That's about all you need to do right there. And now Father wants to show you how to do it in the conflict and in the, in the trials and the tribulations. He wants you to show you how to rejoice in him. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. Now, this is what I want you to do. This is, I, I, I hate to shut you down. I don't want to shut you down because I see some of you getting raptured right now. So I said, rapture's not in the church. I see some people getting raptured right now. What are you talking about? Amen. Hallelujah. Uh, well, obviously, you've been getting raptured away in glory, caught away. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Thank you, living God. But I want you to do this. I want you to do this. I want you to recognize the smallest bit, the smallest acts of obedience create the greatest miracles of faith. I don't want you to forget this for the rest of your life, okay? Say with me, say, the smallest acts of obedience create the greatest miracles of faith. And I can prove it to you. A small act of calling upon the name of Jesus resulted in the greatest miracle of salvation that you'll ever know anything about. That's the one that happened to you personally. That's one of the greatest ones you'll ever know. Hallelujah. Smallest act of obedience of saying, doing, honoring the Lord with your substance were the first fruits of your increase. When, when, when God said to Jacob, I will bless you, I will go with you, and I will bless you, the, Jacob's response said, was this, seeing that you're going to do this for me, I'm going to give you a tenth of everything that you give to me. Why? Fundamentally, because it was an act of worship, a recognition that this is what God is doing, that a supernatural event was taking place, not by his own strength of his own arm, not by his own power, not by his own wit, but by a supernatural work of God's divine grace. And so also that he himself would not forget. And we want this same thing to happen to you because the Lord said that if you will give generously, if you will sow generously by your giving, and my goodness, I, I thank the Lord for the people who generously give in this place and what God will do and continue to do to multiply. He says, I will generously give to you so that you can generously reap. And he goes, brings it to this level so that you will have all sufficiency in all things. That's why I know that if the Lord tells me to go do a crusade somewhere, no problem, because he's promised all sufficiency to me. I have everything I need of need to go and do whatever it is he tells me to go and do. Hallelujah. When we walked onto this property, you know, and the, you know, and the price tag was $14 million, reduced price, huh? And I didn't, I didn't even, I was just happy. I was just glad to walk onto the property because the fact of it is, it isn't even my bill, it's his bill. I didn't even my life, it's his life. I'm hidden in him. Hallelujah. It's box to cut the mamba every day. What a wonderful thing. Now being found in Christ Jesus. Now being found in Him. See, I am now found in Him. I know people right, re, rush, they rush right through and say, now being found in Him, not having our own righteousness, which is by the law. No, I don't even get that far. I'm just stuck on it. I'm found in Him. You can only find me in Jesus. Go looking for me. Go look for me. You can't find me till you find Jesus because I'm found in Him. Amen. And, and what a place to live. We pray that you will live in that for the rest of your life. You stop living your own life, start living his life. Amen. Amen. So I want you to just begin to th pray about, consider what you're going to sow into the kingdom today, what you're going to be willing to honor the Lord with in terms of your substance, in terms of your offering. I want you, and, and then before you leave today, we're going to have an opportunity. We'll have an opportunity for you to come and, and give and and so, uh, we, just, we just want that to sit on you, the blessings of the Lord on you. Think about how much Father gave and how He continues to give and how much He's going to continue to give you. Amen. Hallelujah. Get involved in the giving in Jesus' mighty name. And then I want to make sure that everybody understands, Richard will be back here tonight as well. And so, and go get someone, invite a friend. Somebody needs healing. Someone needs a miracle of salvation. Whatever kind of miracle they need because the miracle worker is here. Christ Jesus is here in the place. Amen. Amen. Richard, do you, want, do you want the lapel man or do you want the mic? I take the mic. Okay. They don't, it's kind of weird because... If, yeah, I'll get it right for you. Guys. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I, uh,
I don't even, uh, I don't even want to even think right now. <laughs> because I'll be honest with you, I am totally overcome today. And I need you to pray for me. Because I, uh, I need help this morning. <laughs> <laughs> just to be able to <sighs> ah that's what I feel like just to be able to get out what's in me <laughs> and what I feel that God has to reveal to you and say to you today. And, you know, the thing that I'm so grateful of is that there's no stinking clock <laughs> that's here that's binding me and has me in chains and fetters telling me how much time I have left. Thank God that the place has been, the ground has been tilled and the work's been done by your pastor and by you guys and the Holy Ghost, you've created the atmosphere for God to come and God to move and God to do whatever it is He wants to do, for whatever it is He wants to say, for however long He wants to do it. But there's no time. Now, unfortunately, across America today, churches have already gotten out. Some pastors have, have already received Letters of meanness from congregation members. Some congregation members have already having the pastor for lunch as they eat lunch because he said something or went a little long. But thank God that's not here in San Diego, California, the body place. Amen. Now, my, my wife, she will be here with us tonight. She did get a hold of something that didn't sit well with her. So she was already dressed and ready to come and press through. And I said, just stay home. I said, just, I mean, just stay at, I said, home. Maybe, hey, who knows? I said, just stay, <laughs> just stay at the hotel and uh, <laughs> we'll see you tonight. And uh, hallelujah. <laughs> The Lord is good. Now, I, I, I want to tell you right now that I so appreciate your pastors and, and Pastor Mark and uh, Sister Ann, Pastor Ann. I, you know, every time, I, every time I think of them, I think of, you know, Acts, the book of Acts, the fourth chapter, when Peter and John, you know, they, after they got out of prison, they, they, had, they had a place to go. And one thing I do know that, you know, we're not just friends in the natural, but we're friends in the spirit. And I honestly mean that I'd do anything for this couple. And I, I, I know that if, if I ever <laughs> need somebody to pray, I, I know that I have two friends here in San Diego, California, that know how to get all to heaven. Amen? And know how to, how to move things in the Spirit. And, and you need friendships like that. You need people in your life that, that are going to encourage you, that, are going to, that when you leave their presence, man, your faith is, I mean, it's exploding, that Man, on the inside of you, you're exploding that when you leave their presence, man, you're, you're even more in love with Jesus. You're even more in hungry for the things of God than when you first came into their presence. Amen? Amen. I mean, that's what we're supposed to do. I mean, the, we're supposed to encourage one another. Amen? Amen. Not, 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 listen, not from mental ascent, not from our head, not from our carnal thinking, but from our spirit because we have something alive on the inside of us that God himself has birthed on the inside of us. And I mean this morning, I need your help because I have a lot of things going over on the inside of me and, and God's going to get it out and you're going to leave this place changed. And I can promise you this, it's going to be very hard for you to, uh, today and tonight. It's going to be very hard for you to leave sick. It's going to be very hard, very hard for you to leave depressed. It's going to be very hard for you to leave here without something from heaven. I'm telling you something right now, you're just going to have to fight it with everything on the inside of you. But I know that's not going to happen, Amen. But I woke up, told Pastor Mark this morning that I woke up, you know, first off, when I came on this property after he picked us up from the airport, and uh, <laughs> whew, 
as I came on the property, I immediately felt like I was wrapped. You know, John, you know, John on the Isle of Patmos, the Bible says that he was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. The Amplified says he was wrapped in the Spirit. I, I literally felt like I was wrapped. I was wrapped in the presence of the Lord here as we, as we uh, took the tour through, through this property. And, and I, I was just really overcome with just God's goodness and His greatness. And, and I, I tell you, I, I, I just... <laughs> Uh, hallelujah. I, I, I know that there's, 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 there's so much that really if you used to even be told what the Lord wanted to do, uh, what, he's, what the Lord's really going to do, you wouldn't be able to contain it yet. You wouldn't be able to, you wouldn't have no place in your mind to put it. That's why you're just going to have here, we see a little, we hear a little, amen, we, we, we see in part, amen. So you're just going to be able to get things in part because I promise you it's bigger than you. I promise you it's bigger than anything that you can even conceive in your head because you have to understand God is big. He is a big God. And, 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 and I was just overcome with, with His presence and, and with the joy of the Lord and, and His faithfulness and His goodness and in His mercy. And I woke up this morning and I heard these words, I'm good. <laughs> I heard these words. No, the Lord's speaking to me this morning. I heard these words, these words that I'm good. I'm great, and I'm faithful, and I'm glory. And you have to understand that He's all that and a whole bunch more, but the Lord is good. The Lord is merciful. He is faithful. And you, I just look at, and as I see what's, what's here, I, I see the goodness of God. I see the faithfulness of God. And you have to understand something, that God is good. You really don't understand it because if you really understood the one you call Lord, the one you call Father, if you really understood what I just said to you, you would not be able to sit there and just nod your head like a bobblehead. Yes. No, no. God is good. Oh, come on. He is good. Everything about him is good. Everything he does is good. He can't be anything else but good. He is faithful. Everything about him is faithful. He can't be anything but faithful. Come on, he is more than enough. Everything he does is more than enough. He can't be anything less than more than enough. Oh! And he's the one you call on. He's the one that has showed you and promised things to you. And you better know that he and all of his goodness and all of his faithfulness and all of his glory shall bring it to pass. It might be another 12 years, but you better know he's faithful. And he's spoken and he's going to bring it to pass. How? I told you it's going to be very hard for you to stay bound up in here this morning. I'm pro- I haven't even got to my notes yet, even if I even do. But, <laughs> but I had a lot of things going over in me and a lot of scriptures going over in me. And I, hallelujah. <laughs> you know, most Christians... Don't even know what church is. First off, they don't even know who they are. And they don't even know how to respond. They, 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 they're, so used to, to, they're so used to religion. They're so used to coming in and everything being so scripted by man. They don't even know what it means to be led by the Holy Ghost. They don't even know what it means to come in and sit and bask in the presence of the Lord. They don't even know what it means to allow the unseen one, the precious Holy Spirit himself, to be in charge and allow him to speak and allow him to do and allow him to walk up and down each aisle and in between each row and touch every heart. They don't even understand it. And they think that we're crazy. No, we're normal. If you're not like that, you're crazy and there's something wrong. Because we are spiritual people. 
We are people that, listen, the moment we gave our life to Jesus, the moment we made him Lord, we died. Your life doesn't belong to you. Your life belongs to him. Why would you even want to be in control of your life anyway? Well, you're so limited. Why do you want to be limited? But when you lean on the arm of flesh and when you decide to do something because you think it's good, you're so limited. But oh, when you hear what the Spirit of the Lord has to say and you take that giant step of faith and do what He tells you to do, then you're going to see the greatness. Then you're going to see the mighty. Then you're going to see the awesomeness of God. Well, you know, Brother Richard, I just got to have all my ducks in a row before I do it. Well, you're never going to do anything then. Because God doesn't operate that way. He's a faith God. Hello? God's a faith God. He'll just tell you, go into the city. Well, Lord, what am I supposed to do when I go into the city? Go into the city. But Lord, okay, but what am I going to do when I go into the city? Go into the city. See, because it takes faith. See, most people, well, what am I going to do? They want to know what they're going to do when they get in the city. Well, that's why their life is so limited. That's why, they, that's why they're like most Christians. They're, they've allowed themselves to be shoved into the envelope of the status quo and do nothing for the kingdom of God. Well, I just got to know what I'm going to do when I get there. You're going you're to miss out on what he has. All right, Lord, I'll go into the city. And the moment you take that step of faith and go and you step in that city, boom, he'll speak to you again and tell you something else to do. Why? Because he's in control. He's in charge. Our life doesn't belong to us. Our life is in him. Hello? We are in him. He's, in, he's the one leading. He's the one that's guiding. And our feet are led of the Lord. Amen? I want you to just turn with me, if you would, and I, I, I'm going to read a number of scriptures, but I want you to turn with me first to the book of Genesis, chapter 17. Genesis, chapter 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I think it's time that we come into an understanding of who he is. And as the church, who we are and what, we, what it is that we're to do. And how we should live and how we should act. Because we don't do anything independently of ourselves. Everything we do, we do because we've heard. Everything we do, we do because we have seen. He's spoken to us. Understand something. This has to mean everything to you. This is, this is our life. This is the Word of God. And we never treat the Word of God as some ordinary book. This is not like some ordinary book that you just take and pull off the shelves at Barnes & Noble. You have to understand that this is the Word of God. Man's Word is dead before the ink even dries at the printer. But God's Word is alive. Man's Word, listen, it never usually outlasts a generation. But God's Word is alive. It lasts for generation to generation to generation. Why? Because it is impregnated. Every single word, every single dot, every single period is is the, is engulfed it is impregnated with the very life of God and how you treat the word of God is is is, is the, your attitude toward the word of God is is your attitude toward God you have to understand we have to be married to this word we have to devour it and spend time in it spend more time in it than anything else I said to my wife the other day, I said, you know, I'm ready, I'm ready to turn off the stupid one-eyed devil at TV, at television, that's what I call it. I said to her, I said, call, 
call Verizon and see, I want, I want all the channels turned off. And when I get home, I'm doing that. I want all the channels turned off, and I just need one channel. That's all I need. Just one channel. I told Pastor Mark yesterday, I just need one channel on my TV. I don't need news channels. Just give me the golf channel. That's all I need. <laughs> That's all I need. But, but it's amazing to me how, how most Christians, how they spend more time in front of the TV than then sit and spend time into the Word of God. But that just shows you the attitude toward God. Because whatever you respect, whatever you love, you're going to spend the most time with. Hello, come on. Don't, don't, don't tell me that you're hungry for Jesus, but you don't tell anybody about Him. Because if you tell me you're hungry for Jesus, but yet you don't tell anybody about Him, then I'm, well, I promise you, I will have to question your hunger. I'll have to question your passion. Because when you're passionate about something, you talk about it all the time. I just think Pastor Mark and I, and my wife, and I, that's all we've been talking about is the things of God. Oh, every once in a while we'll talk about, you know, golf or what. I've got to get that in sometimes. But I mean, or, but I mean, we're talking about the things of God. Why? Because is there anything else? I mean, honestly, is there anything else? No, understand, God's Word has to be devoured. And every time we open it up, every time we look at the words on each page, we need to do so as though the Master Himself is standing in front of us, giving it to us. That's how it means so much to us, and it means everything to us. I was telling Pastor Mark and Ann last night about I put something on Facebook, it's been a few months ago, about the uh, church in China. So, uh, they they, they was delivered some Bibles, and there was this, it was this suitcase, and they opened it up, and, and it was full of Bibles wrapped. And they, I mean, they, this, they swarmed to the suitcase and grabbing the Bibles, and, and, and they're unwrapping them, and they're, they're holding it to their hearts like this, and they're weeping. Tears were coming down their face off their cheek under the Bible, and they're going, Bible, Bible, Biblia. And they're kissing, and they're kissing it. Why? Because it means everything to them. And Pastor Mark was telling me that how in some churches, like in Korea, they have one page. They have one page. Here in America, unfortunately, Bibles are used as decoration pieces. Matter of fact, in America, many Christians, their Christianity is the cross they have on their neck. And they treat God as some lucky charm. They treat God as though he's some genie in a bottle. He's some rabbit's foot. That they can live any way they want to live and do anything they want to do and act any way they want to act. And then when they reap the consequences of it, cry out to him. Then he comes because he's faithful and he's good. And he'll bring them through it. And then they'll go back. Now understand something. I'm not a Christian because it's what I believe. I'm a Christian because it's just who I am. He's everything to me. Listen, I, I, when, I, I, when I was growing up, I, I served the devil. Real, I was a good sinner. I served the devil really good. But I promise you, when I got saved, I made the decision, oh, I'm going to serve him the one who's more than enough, the one who created the devil. <laughs> Amen? The one who's omnipresent, the whole one who's omnipotent. I'm going to serve him, and I'm going to serve him with everything. But then I just happened to get baptized in the fire as well. Oh, and then that just took me to a whole new realm. Hello? But most Christians don't even know, they don't even know, to forget about what it means to, to, to live the supernatural, spirit-filled life. They don't even know about that. They don't understand about the fire. But that also tells me they've never encountered him because I promise you, when you encounter God, when you encounter the one I'm about ready to talk to you about a little bit more, you will always, always, 100% of the time, it, without fail, you will always be baptized in fire. 
because he is fire. You cannot come in the presence of fire and not get it. You cannot come in the presence of fire and leave without it. He is fire. He is a consuming fire. Jesus said he will be baptized with the Holy Ghost and fire. It's about time that Christians, everywhere they go, they're defined by their boldness and they're defined by their passion for Jesus and they're defined by their fire. No, we're not defined by our compromise. We're defined by the fact that we're so in love with him that we refuse to compromise unto death. Glory to God. I promise you, listen to me this morning, I promise you, when Moses went and stood in front of Pharaoh, I promise you that Pharaoh saw the fire of God, not just on him, but the saw the fire of God in his eyes. Because you cannot come in the presence of God who is fire and not get it. He is fire. He answers by fire. And those that call on him must be baptized in that fire. And everywhere you go, that fire goes with you. That's why demons come out of people. That's why demons shout and scream. That's why sickness and disease leaves. Why? Because you're so enveloped and so full of the fire of God that everywhere you go, it just leaks from you. That's what it means to be a Christian. Christians are not people that are tolerant. Give me a break. Well, you know, Brother Richard, you know, we just need to be tolerant. Jesus never preached tolerance. Jesus preached two things, the kingdom of God and repentance. Amen. There was no tolerance involved in his message. And Jesus made things very clear, especially to the religious leaders. Why do you think he called them devils? Then he took it a step further and said, if you make any converts, they'll be twice the devils that you are. Amen? Then he then, not only that, then, he, then he'll get physical. And he'll take a whip and go into the temple that's meant to pray. That's turned into a Den of thieves where they sell, and he drove them out. Let me tell you something. He was a man's man, I promise you that. Jesus, di Jesus didn't tolerate anything that was not of his father. I'm telling you right now, he did not tolerate anything that was not of his father. Matter of fact, he didn't do anything unless he saw his father do it. Jesus said, I and my own self can do nothing. Why do you think he did what he did? Because he saw his father doing it. Because he saw his father doing it. What do we do? Understand Jesus is our example. Everything we do is because we see our father doing it. Because he tells us. He shows us. And everything that Jesus was, everything that he did, so are we. He was born of the Holy Ghost. We're born of the Holy Ghost. He was baptized in the Holy Ghost. We're baptized in the Holy Ghost. He was sent forth by the Holy Ghost. We're sent forth by the Holy Ghost. Everything he did was by the Holy Ghost. Everything we do is by the Holy Ghost. Everything he did because he saw it. Everything we do because we see it. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Father, for such a great have you found Genesis 17? If you haven't found it, forget about it. I just, I just want to just, by the Holy Spirit today, the help of the Holy Spirit, and just, and there's going to come an understanding and revelation to your heart as well. But I, I think it's so important that we understand the Father. Because He is everything. No, no, He's everything. He's everything. No, no, he's everything. 
There's nothing else. He's everything. And I don't know people, people are, well, you just radical. No, 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 that's no. Understand something. When you're baptized in fire, this is, this is what it's called to be normal. No, everywhere we go, lives should be changed. Everywhere we go, the world should see. Hey, these people are unlearned and ignorant. They've been with Jesus. Amen? Hey, listen, you don't want them to say anything else. Every time that you leave somebody's presence, they should say, they've been with Jesus. They've been with Jesus. And it's not just because, well, understand, it is not just because we talk about it. It's because who we are, every fiber of our being is enwrapped and engulfed in him. Every fiber of our being burns with the very fire of who he is because he's fire. Every fiber of our being burns with the fire of Pentecost. You hear it in our talk. You hear it in our prayer. You hear it in our conversation. Genesis 17, verse, verse 1. And when Abram was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abram and said unto him, I am the almighty God. Walk before me and be thou perfect. Uh, Abraham's name is going to be changed to Abraham. But I want you to notice something here. The Bible says that God came and God revealed himself. I hate it when I hear people say things like, you know, God's a mystery. You no, know, God's only a mystery if you don't know him. Now, how he's going to do things you might not understand might be a mystery. Things he's promised you because there's so much bigger than you, dreams that he's given you, the plan for you, your life that he's shown you, you might not understand. It might be a mystery how he's going to get it and how he's going to bring it to pass because it's so huge. Now, how he brings it to pass might be a mystery, but God himself is not a mystery to us. Understand something. We are in relationship with God. Christianity, that's the very thing that sets us apart from all the religions is that God is not dead. I can take you to the tomb of Jesus and he's not in there. We, we, Christianity is a relationship. And that's why I, I don't like hearing the term early church. And especially you know, most, most people when they talk about ministers, they talk about early church. It's as though they're talking about there's a separate church than what we are today. Understand something, we are the same church. We have not changed. We have the same Father. We have the same Holy Ghost. We have the same purpose. We have the same mission. We have the same glory. We have the same signs, the same wonders. We understand we are the same church. I don't like early church. Well, the early church. The early church, the early church. No, 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 we're the same church. We are the ones, the reason why there's no final chapter in Acts is because we're the ones that write it. Because it's still alive and we're adding to it daily. And, and, and people want to separate, they want to separate us today from what truly is. They want to, they wanted to put us in some box, and that box always is void of the of, of, of the Father. The void, the box is always void of God. It's always void of His glory. It's always void of His power. It's always void of miracles. But God said to Abram, and understand something. You can go through the Word of God from Genesis to Revelation, and God, our Father, He has revealed Himself to us. He has told us who He is. 
There's names. He's given us names after names after names to describe himself. God has not left us ignorant. If you're ignorant of, he, of who he is, it's because you don't get into the word. But if you get in and dive into the word of God, you will understand who he is. Not only that, you'll understand what he likes and what he doesn't like. And here in Genesis 17, he said to Abraham, he said, Abraham, see, what's he doing? He's revealing himself to Abraham. He's, he's showing him a side of himself. He's, Abraham, I am the almighty God. Now, what's the great thing about, uh, about God is that, and we'll try to get into it later or tonight, is that because God in all of his glory and all of his goodness and all of his faithfulness wants us to seek him and to come after him with everything. And he gave us a promise that if we would come after him and we would seek him, he promised us that we'd find him. He said, if you seek me, if you search for me, if you seek me in Jeremiah 29, 13, if you seek me, you shall find me when you search for me with all your heart. In Hebrews 11, he said, he's a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. He wants, understand something. When you begin to see him in his glory and who he is, but yet, he doesn't want to be separate from us. That's why he came. He's the one that came looking for Adam and Eve in the garden. They didn't come looking for him. Why? Because he wants us to worship, but he also wants us to fellowship with him. He wants us to know him, just like you know your earthly father. He wants you to know him, but more than your earthly father. See, it's a relationship. It's what Christianity, it's a relationship with the one who's more than enough. It's a relationship with the almighty God. And, and as we begin, as you look and really get into this, and we don't have time, obviously, today, but as you really get into this, especially in Genesis 6, 17, when he said, I am the almighty God, really, in the Hebrew, he was saying, I am El Shaddai. Meaning, I am the God that is more than enough. And I tell you, I think that's one of the things that really was just consuming me yesterday. And that's, as I'm walking on this property, all I can think of is not only is he good, not only is he merciful, not only is he faithful, but he's more than enough. He's more than enough. No, no, he's more than enough. If you really had a revelation to the fact that your father is more than enough, you wouldn't be able to sit there. Come on, prove to me today you're not a Baptist church. Please, prove to me. Oh, hallelujah. Now, I know you're not a Baptist church. I was just looking for a reaction, and I got it. What did he say? I am more than enough. You know what, Kelly? He's more than enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. No, he's more than enough. 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 No, no, no. Listen. He's more than enough. 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 No, no, church. He's more than enough. I promise you, when you allow yourself 
to totally be dependent upon the more, the one that's more than enough. When you allow yourself to dive in and devour the Word of God, I promise you, you'll find yourself living an, a life that is not limited. Many people live a life that's so limited. But when you allow yourself to step over into the place to where you trust the one that is more than enough and do everything that he says, your life will never, ever again have any limitations in it. Because they understand something. He's more than enough. There is no limitation to him. Now understand what I'm saying to you this morning. There is no limitation to him. There's no limitation to his goodness. There's no limitation to his faithfulness. There's no limitation to his glory. There's no limitation to his power. There's no limitation to him. He's more than enough. That's why when we hear the words cancer, what's that? Oh, there's no limitations to him. When we hear the words impossible, what's that? There's no limitation to him. Because he said, if you just believe, you'll see that there's no limitation to me. Oh, come on. That's what he said. Oh, all things are possible to him that believes. If you can just believe, you will see no limitation to him. That's another way to put all things are possible to him that believes. Well, here's another way to put it. If you just believe, you'll see the unlimitedness. You'll see that there's no limitation to God. Come on, I'm proving I'm no Baptist pastor. You prove this. You're no Baptist congregation. Oh! Most churches aren't going to hear this. But you, I know you hear. I know that you're going to hear it, it, it here in San Diego, and I know you're going to hear it in Tampa. Think about it. Let me ask you a question: Who created the heavens and the earth? God, my Father. See, understand. I'm, let me take you a step a little further here. He's not really your God. He's your Father. You know, He's God to those who don't know Him. But when you know Him, He's no longer your God. He's your Father. It's called a relationship. That's why he's, our hearts and spirit cries, Daddy. <laughs> he's God, he's dad, he's dad, he's God. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> and there's no limitations to him. Think about this. Didn't, did he not make the heavens and the earth? Well, understand, there's no limitations to the heavens. But then again, there's no limitations to the earth. Because whatever God creates, there's no limitation in it. Because he's the one that's more than enough. And if the one who's more than enough created and made it, then there cannot be any limitation. Do you know I saw something the other day? I actually, it's been, it's last year sometime. But I saw something about the, just the oceans. You know, my Bible says that God created the heavens, the earth. He created the sea and filled the sea, right? You know, I saw something just it's last year sometime that and I actually forget, I wish I would have read it more and we got more of the facts down, but they were, they were saying how many, and I forget the amount, but how 
many new species of fish they're finding in the ocean every month? The, they just found some new species of frog in Brazil. What am I saying? What am, I'm saying this. How dare us think that we can explore and that we can already know everything that God had created and made. He created this universe. He created this earth. And there's more than enough. Listen, I promise you, he made the fruit. He made the banana. Listen, I promise you, there's more bananas that will fall to the ground in rot than men will ever be able to eat. What am I saying? I'm saying God created it. God made it. And whenever God does anything, there's always more than enough. Perfect example is this place. Amen? Amen. He's more than enough. No, he's more than enough. See, when you begin to step over and begin to see him, all the things of this world go dimmer and dimmer and dimmer to mean absolutely nothing. He becomes everything. You want to know more. You want to dive in more. I, I, my cry, I, I said to the Lord just the other day, I said, Lord, Lord, I, I got to know you more. I got to know you more. Lord, I, I got to be able to, to just, Lord, I got to be able, when I stand in front of people, I, I got to be able to just, to just describe you even more and just describe your glory and your goodness and your mercy and just who you are even more. There's so much. Lord, there's so much to you. There's so much. There's nothing else we want. We're totally consumed with him. But when you, when you come to the place to where you begin to understand him, you begin to see him for who he is, I promise you, you'll run for more. They won't, won't, you won't, you won't want, yeah, I promise you, once you begin to get in his presence and begin to see, and as he begins to reveal himself to you, as you begin to see through the word of God, as he begins to reveal himself to you through the word of God, I promise you, you won't say, oh, I don't know if I want any of that. Oh, no, you go, I got to have it. I got to have more of it. Amen? Amen. See, he's more than enough. I, I remember a few years ago, I was in this church, and Sunday morning, it was, in, it was in Texas, actually. I was in this church in Texas, and there's probably about 500 people there, and the pastor heard of us and so invited me to come. So I came and Sunday morning, ended up being there for, ended up being there for, I think it was three weeks. Sunday morning, very first service. I mean, it was like we'd been in four or five week revival. Very first service. I'm telling you, the fire of God was falling like liquid fire. With people jumping out of their seats, hollering, and screaming, and running around the church. Matter of fact, people start running. I actually had to tell the people, look, if you're going to run, run the same direction. <laughs> 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 I mean, the fire of God was hitting them, and they jump up and take off running, running into one another. But, <laughs> but hey, I would rather that. I mean, uh, yeah, nothing, nothing for me. I mean, don't sit there and dance in your seat. I mean, you see people sitting there getting the fire on. They're sitting there dancing in their seat. No, just jump up and take off. <laughs> and that's that's what they that's what they were doing. And Sunday night, the same way. Well, Monday, Monday, morning, Monday morning, of course, the pastor calls me and he says, Brother Richard, he says, I think we're going to have to end these meetings on Wednesday. I said, Pastor, that wasn't on our agreement. But so tell me what's going on. Well, I think we just need to end the meetings on Wednesday. And I thought, I said to the pastor, I said, Pastor, I've been doing this for a long time. I mean, this, this year we celebrate 29 years of ministry uh, and been revival since 1990. I said, <laughs> I said, Pastor, look, it's not my first rodeo. Just tell me what's going on. I said, what is he or she saying? Because I said he or she because it's always just one or two. Always just one or two. And what gets me is the pastors that allow themselves to be, swayed, be, to be persuaded by the one. And the 99%, they're, gonna, they're just going to leave them. Just go ahead and stay in your mess now. We're going to end revival because the one demon-possessed elder don't want it. No, I'm serious. 
So I said, well, what is he or she saying? And come to find out it was one lady. And here's what he said to me. He said, son, he said, I have to tell you, I got to be honest with you. He said, you've lit more fires in one service than I've seen the whole lifetime of my ministry. I said, well, that's what I am. I am fire. I am a carrier of fire. That is what Christians are supposed to be. Wherever we go, fire goes. And we talked about this. And I've told you that when a revival comes, it's going gonna, it's gonna to reveal the sin. It's going to reveal the mess. Why? So the fire can burn it out. So what's the problem? And Well, I think we should end on Wednesday. So we just begin to talk a little bit more. Next thing I know, you ever seen that commercial on TV, the karate, you know, the high karate cologne commercial where they put it in their hands and put it on their face and then they, they slap themselves? You know the commercial I'm talking about? All right. Well, there is a commercial like that. <laughs> and, and that's what the pastor started doing. He started, started slapping himself. He said, he said oh, what was I thinking? He says, I was like I was deceived. We ain't, we're not in these meetings. And we didn't. We ended up going like three weeks. And, but I said all that to say this. On Monday night, Monday night, there was a lady that was there. I still remember her name. Her name was Tracy. I saw her. She was on, sitting on the aisle. And as I'm preaching, I seen the anointing of God falling on people. And I seen the fire of God falling on this lady. Her name's Tracy. And I didn't know her name was Tracy at the time, obviously. But I, I said to her, I said, ma'am, just step out in the aisle. And as she went to step out, I went to lay my hands on her. And when I did, because I minister with, with the tangible presence of God anyway, the anointing, the fire of God. I, when I lay my hands on people, I know when the anointing of God goes into people. I ministered with the tangible presence of God. And when I laid my hand on her, the fire of God, I, I mean, it's like holding a garden hose and as you, you know, you're watering your lawn or whatever. You feel the water, just the pressure of the water coming out. That's what I felt like. And as I laid my hand on her, the fire of God went into her and boom, to the ground she goes. And she stuck to the floor. She stuck to the floor for over a half hour. Which is not really, that's, that's not anything unusual. We see that, I mean, on a regular basis. I mean, we had a lady in Kentucky in a trance. We, she went into a trance for four days. I mean, didn't move, didn't eat any food, didn't drink any water, anything for four days. And so you better be back tonight or I'm going to pray to hit you today. So you, <laughs> and the Lord hears me always when I pray. <laughs> and so this lady got so touched, Pastor Mark, and I didn't, and I just went and started praying for other people. And that was Monday night. Wednesday night, see, the enemy wanted to stop it. There's also a lady there in that meeting, her name was Kay. She had an incurable blood disease that the fire of God fell on her, and she just began to burn like fire. Fire of God fell on her, and she was instantly healed of her blood disease. I, matter of fact, I was in meetings in Houston. Kelly came up to those meetings. I was in meetings in Houston uh, last year, and they live in Houston. And, and she came to my meetings, and that was, that was been a number of years ago, and she's still healed to this day of an incurable blood disease. But this lady came back on Wednesday night, and uh, the, because the pastor, associate pastor said to me, look, I know you get testimonies every night. He said, have this, you need to have this lady testify. God, God gave her a miracle. So I had her come and testify, and she began to, and here's what she said. She said, I, ha I had cancer spread throughout my body. I was in stage four of cancer. The doctor had operated her on her three times. The third time, he just, uh, as he opened her up, he sewed her back up, and he said, there's nothing we can do for you. Spread into her bones, every air of her body. And matter of fact, the doctor, she told me this. The doctor said this to her because she had two kids, little, uh, little kids. The doctor said to her, go home, and for the next two months, because you've got about two months to live, create memories for your kids to remember you by. That's what the doctor said to her. But that night, that Monday night, the fire of God fell on her. And that was Wednesday. She's testifying. But Wednesday during the day, she went to the doctor. And as she's in the waiting room, waiting for the doctor to come in, as soon as the doctor came in, the doctor looked at her and saw that something was different about her. See, they don't just know we're different because we talk, but they also know because they see. We're carriers of his glory. She said, Doctor, I've been in the revival meetings, so just run the test that you got to run. That's why you wanted me to come in here today. And 
She said it took about 45 minutes. I, th- I guess that with the, the clinic that was there, they could do everything in, it, they can do everything there and find out the results, everything there. And uh, she said, the doctor, she said, when he came back in the room about 45 minutes later, she said, I could tell that he'd been crying. And she said that, here's his words. Tracy, I don't know where you've been, but wherever you've been, you need to continue to go. Because what I'm about to tell you, if I would not have opened you up and saw the cancer, I'd never believe what I'm about ready to tell you. But I have to tell you, it's astounding to me. I don't even know what to think about it. Except, wherever you've been, go back, because we can't find cancer at all in your body. (laughs) Then he said this. He said, the remarkable thing about it, as I look at the test, he says, it is, he said, this is really even more unexplainable to me. He said, it is though your body readings and all the tests, and I don't know all the medical jargon, but basically he was saying all the tests that's come back, not only do you do not cancer, but your body shows that you've never, your blood work, everything shows that you've never had cancer. And when she said that to me, all I can think of, he's not just enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. He's more than enough. Now, I, I just, I want to read a few more things to you, scriptures to you, because I, I want you to also see something else about him. And then we're going to, I'm going to pray. Now, I, 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 I put the, wrote these down today, but I, I, just, I, I, we just, I just want you to, just, you to meditate on what I want. Don't, you don't have to turn because I'm going to read you a number of scriptures, but I want you just to meditate on what the Lord has to say to us here from his word. In Psalms 119.90, your faithfulness endures to all generations. You have established the earth and it stands fast. Psalms 108.4, for your unfailing love is higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Lamentations 3.22 and 23, the steadfastness love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. Now, what am I doing? I'm reading, listen, God is showing us who he is. Oh, Ristalabombro Basata. First Corinthians 119, God is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son, Jesus Christ the Lord. Psalms 33, 4. For the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Your love, O Lord, reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness to the skies. Oh, as I read these scriptures, I think of this place and I think of what the Lord has promised this church. Psalms 86, 15. But you, O Lord, are God merciful and gracious, slow to anger, and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. Psalms 89, 8, O Lord God of hosts, who is a mighty one like unto you? O Lord, you, O Lord, you and your faithfulness is round about you an essential part of all of you at all times. And let me just read a few more to you. In Psalms 25, 7, do not remember the sins of my youth and my, and my rebellious ways. According to your love, remember me, for you, Lord, are good. For you, Lord, are good. Psalms 84, 11, 
For the Lord is good and is the sun and is a sun and shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. He uh, listen to this. He or the Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing. Listen to me. No good thing. Everybody say no good thing. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. Psalms 86, 15. But you, O Lord, are a God merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. Psalms, 10, Psalms 105. Psalms 100, verse 5. The Lord is good and his mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Psalms 106, 1, praise ye the Lord. O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 107, 1, O oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endures forever. Psalms 107, 31, All oh, that men would praise the Lord for his goodness, for his wonderful works to the children of men. Psalms 118.1, Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, because his mercy endureth forever. Psalms 135.3, Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. Psalms 135 verse Verse or Psalms 136, verse 1. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. I understand something. I'm not reading the same scripture over and over and over. God is constantly repeating himself. When God constantly repeats himself, there's a good reason for it. Why? Because he's trying to get something. He's wanting to get something across to us. What is he trying to get across to us today? What does he keep saying over and 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 over? He is faithful and he is good. Oh, let me read a few more. <laughs> Psalms 145, verse 9. The Lord is good to all. Oh, you know why I like that? Because sometimes Christians think that, you know, God's only good to us. But that's not what the Bible says. The Bible says in Psalms 145, 3, the Lord is good to to all. Guess what? Not only is he good to us, but he's also good to the drunk down the street. He's also good to the faith through the prostitute down the road. Hello? See, understand something. He's good. And because he's good, he can be nothing else but good. Well, Brother Richard, what about his judgment? Understand something. Even his judgment is good. Now, not necessarily if you're on the other end. But God is good. And everything that comes from him is good. That's why even his judgment has to be good because he's good. God can't be anything but good. Understand, when you're good, you can't be anything but good. When you're love, he is love. He is love. And he is love. He is love. And when he is love, he can be nothing and do nothing but love. He is mercy. Why do you think he keeps saying, I got a whole bunch more scriptures I can read on that. He is mercy. Why do you think he keeps saying over and over and over he's mercy? Because he is mercy. He is good. He is love. He is faithful. He is mercy. And everything he does is mercy. He can't be anything else but mercy. Paul's friend Epaphroditus, the Bible says that he was sick unto death. But God had mercy. 
Why? Because he's mercy. Do you understand? Oh, the more, the more I begin to really see him, the more I really, really understand that, oh, I don't really even know you. And that just makes me want to know you even more. That's why I just, I, I, I tell you, I, I, my, my wife and I, we just, Pastor Mark, I, I couldn't wait to get here. I, I really, I love spending time with your pastor. That's why I'm staying over an extra day. I love spending time with your pastor. I just, I, I, I'm charged and energized and now even more so when I, you know, see what he's done and see his goodness and see his faithfulness and see his mercy and see his promise that he is faithful to the end. And when everybody else is not faithful, he's faithful. Can I, can I, can I just take a few more minutes? Can I just, I, I just said, uh, I have something just going over in me. I, just turn, turn with me to Psalms 34. I just want to show you something else. Psalms 34. Shaka riso pumbra pasa riso tobra anda vrapa sista rumba bashi koromane shukura mahata. And see, and understand something. Let me ask you a question. How many of you here, God's shown you something about your life that hadn't come to pass yet? Raise your hand. How many here, God showed you some things that you're going to be doing, but you haven't done them yet? Raise your hand. Guess what? Everything he's promised, everything he showed you, he is faithful, and he is good, and he is merciful, and he will bring it to pass in your life. No matter what people are saying to you, no matter what they're telling you, no matter what the, even the circumstances in your life look at, God will bring it to pass. Because he's good. Because you know what? When he promises something, he promises it and he fulfills it. Psalms, look at this, Psalms 34. Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Now, what, how, listen, how many times is his praise going to be in your mouth? No, just every, a few times a week? A few times a day? No, continually. No, continually his praise is going to be coming forth from you. Listen, I, I, there's a reason why I'm an evangelist. I wouldn't want to be a pastor. My wife and I, you know, the other day, you know, we, she was talking about maybe passing the church. I'm like, nah, shut up. I didn't say shut up to her, but I'm like, nah. I got the easy job. I, I blow in, blow up, and blow out. <laughs> pastors, <laughs> pastors got to look at you all the time. I don't want to do that. I mean, I'm dealing with somebody right now. I'm just like, I'm ready just to like, I, I said to my wife, it, it really is a good thing I'm not God. Oh, really, it is. Because if I was God, there would be a lot of people already, we'd be gone. It's just how it is. <laughs> it's be Austin La Vista, baby. I mean, <laughs> Lot's wife all over again. Pillar salt. <laughs> now you're laughing because you feel the same way. Don't sit there and look like you ain't. Like you don't think that sometimes. <laughs> but you know, I'm not God, and but He is, and He's not like that. You know, even when we want to give up and quit, He doesn't, because He's faithful. Amen. Well, I don't listen. I'm just thankful people didn't give up on me, so I can't give up on people because they didn't give up on me. Amen. And um, <laughs> oh, hallelujah! So I, the reason I say it's a good thing—I mean, why God made me an evangelist—I'm just the type of person I just tell everything. I do. I just, I tell everything. I've had people in my meetings say, don't just share so much about yourself. I, I can't. I just, I fillet myself open. And I just, that's just who I am. I mean, you either like me or you don't like me. But I just, I just tell everything. And I, and, and I just do everything. And I do it constantly. And I do it all the time. And you know, I was like telling Pastor Mark, you know, in the car yesterday, you know, like I'm on the road. And I'll be at a revival someplace. And I'll find this restaurant I like. 
and I'll be in the I'll be in a church for three, four, five, six, seven weeks. I will literally go to the same restaurant every day. That's just me. I mean, I just I just that way. And I, I've got to tell everybody everything. And so the Lord did something for me last year, year before last. And I've been believing God for 24 years. 24 years. I've been believing God to play Augusta. And I had people laugh at me. People, people are golfers laugh at me. Tell them, oh, he, they turned Bill Gates down. He's the richest man in the world. They wouldn't even let him be a member. And you're going to play Augusta? Yeah, right. I said, well, hey, keep laughing. Just keep laughing. I'm going to play Augusta. And when I do get the invitation, guess who I'm not bringing? <laughs> <laughs> and my, I had somebody tell me, and I got the invitation to play, and I had somebody tell me, take me. I said, no, 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 no. I believe God for 24 years. You believe God now. Yeah. That's what I told him. I said, you believe God now. Don't ride on my faith. You believe God, you ugly thing. <laughs> and so I did. For 24 years, Brother Kelly, for 24 years, I believed God to, to, to play Augusta. And the Lord opened it up and, and gave me that invitation and flew me there, myself and, and Pastor Rodney and another pastor in Georgia. And the member flew us there in his own private jet. Went there in a suit and tie. Flew us there in his own private jet. And I, I, I played horrible, but I didn't. I told my caddy. I said, I don't care. Because he, he's like, I said, you know, I said, I, I, I said you, know, you know why I don't care that I'm playing bad? He said, what, why is that, Mr. Moore? I said, because I believe God for 24 years to play this course. And he looked at me like, believe God? I said, oh, I believe God. I believe my father for 24 years to play this. And I'm walking, I'm walking out something I believed and I had faith for. It took 24 years, but I'm walking it right now. And I just want to enjoy the moment. <laughs> So I don't care. I don't care. But you know what? But here's what I did, though. When God opened that door, I told everybody. I actually, I had, my, I had some of my friends that play golf. It's just like, okay, shut up. Enough already. No, no, no. No. Oh, my Bible says, listen, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I told everybody. I mean, I told everybody. Listen, I was getting on the airplane, because I live on them anyway, but I was getting on the airplane, and as I got on the airplane, a guy who, who had a, had a um, golf hat on, and I'm getting on the airplane, and I saw his title and said, I said, oh, you're a golfer? He said, yeah. I said, I'm playing Augusta. <laughs> I'm playing Augusta. I know, I'm serious. I told him, I'm playing Augusta. And I'd see people with golf logos on, and especially those that had a, 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 a master's logo on. I said, hey, you, you been to Augusta? Oh, no, I haven't been. I said, oh, it's a dream of mine, but it probably never happened. You know what I said? I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm playing, and I played it. No, I'm serious. His praise should continually be in my mouth. No, you can't believe that people now want, want me to get them on Augusta. I, you know, I tell them, I said, I believe God. No, you believe God. Now, and they laughed at me. Those that laughed, Pastor Mark, they're not laughing anymore. <laughs> so now you know what I'm speaking? I'm going to be a member. <laughs> oh, come on. Let me go over here. <laughs> Let me, I, I don't know what's on with that. Let me come over here to the revival section. <laughs> I'm going to be a member now. Yeah. I mean, here I am for him all this time been telling you just how glorious and how awesome he is and I'll say something like I'm going to be a member of Augusta like <laughs> all things are possible <laughs> alright alright I can tell you're not rejoicing with me on that one <laughs> he says my soul my soul shall make her boast in the Lord Me. Even better lighting here. <laughs> my soul, verse 2, my soul shall make her boast <laughs> in the Lord, and the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Yeah. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Obviously, there were some things that David feared. But you know what? Obviously, the fears that David had bothered him. So you know what he did? He sought the Lord. And the Lord heard him and took all of his fears out and away. You know, there's nothing. There's nothing we should fear. 
If you've got fear, you've got some fear in your life, just do like David did. David had some fear in his life, but guess what David did? He sought the Lord, and the Lord delivered him from all of his fear. From all of his fear. Because there's not one thing you and I should have any fear about. Nothing. He said, verse 5, he said, they looked unto, they looked unto him and were, and were enlightened, and their faces were not ashamed. The poor man, this poor man cried. You know, David was poor at one time. He was. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. You know, David, David did a lot of crying out to the Lord. David, David did a lot of time, spent a lot of time talking to the Lord. We saw that he had fear, but God delivered him from fear. He, had, he was poor, and God delivered him from that. He ended up financing the temple, amen, being built. He says in verse seven, the angel of the Lord. Verse, uh, verse seven, the angel of the Lord encampeth around about them that fear him and delivereth them. But here's what I want you to see. Verse eight. Oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and see. No, no. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That the Lord is good. Listen. <laughs> Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Yeah. Oh, fear the Lord, you his saints, for there is no want to them that fear him. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. Are you starting to see tonight, tonight, just how good he is and, and about the goodness of the Lord? He is good. Yeah, but Brother Richard, you just don't know what I've done in my life. You just don't know the mess of the things that I've done in my life. You just don't know what I did. Well, you narcissistic, conceited thing, you. There's been other people that's done a whole lot worse than you, and God forgave them and was good to them. What makes you think now? And your narcissistic, conceited ways that your mistake is so great that it's greater than the goodness of God. But you just don't know what I did. No, no, no. You don't know his goodness. But you just don't know what the mess I made. No, 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 no. You don't know his goodness. But Brother Richard, do you understand what I've done, the mess I've made in my life? No, 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 no. You don't understand his goodness. But you don't know all the times I've been married and the things that I did. And I don't. No, 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 no. You don't understand his goodness. For the Lord is good and his mercy endures forever. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. <sighs> you know what? Let me ask you a question. I just, I, I, you, Pastor Mark, I just, you're just going to have to do like this. When, you want me to stop? Just do like this because I can just go on. I mean, it's like, I need to go to China because they want you to go for 12 hours. I go, we need to go tag team. I don't go, we, this is 12 hours? 12 hours? What? Is that all you want is 12 hours? Let me ask you a question. How many of you ever have started a sentence with, oh, and writing a letter? I mean, do you, have you ever done that? I never have. Oh. What? Oh. Oh, what? 
You don't start his sins with all. But David did. You know why? Because David has tasted of his goodness. And when David was trying to talk about his goodness, the only thing he could say was, oh, 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 no, oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. That's, that, that's the new theme every time you leave this church because it's just so good. Oh! <laughs> oh! <laughs> mama! Call Mama up. Mama! Oh! Oh, what? Oh! Let me tell you what happened today. <laughs> let me just tell you how good he is. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He's so good that it's his goodness that leads men to repentance. He's so good that he said goodness and mercy will follow us all the days of our life. Don't make me dance by myself. Oh! You know, I, the only thing I got to relate it to in the natural, now I'm a Kentucky boy from Kentucky. <laughs> have you ever watched, have you ever seen that TV show, that reality show on TV called Moonshiners? Well, that's my family. <laughs> <laughs> the Dynasty Boys, that's my family. Now, I actually, one of my cousins builds moonshine deals. <laughs> but the only thing I can relate it to is my grandma, and she went home to be with the Lord a few years ago, but I tell you, my grandmother's biscuits and gravy, oh, oh, oh shaka, that make you want to talk in tongues. I'm Marusa. Oh! Every time, I, every time I'd go home, I'd go to my grandma's. I'd mail them all. Biscuits and gravy. Oh, ho, 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 ho. But, I mean, in the natural, that's the only thing I can relate it to. I mean, there ain't nothing better. Listen, saints, there ain't nothing better than seeing them hot biscuits, homemade, come out of the oven, opening them up, and taking some butter. <laughs> yeah, butter, okay? Every once in a while, you just let it all go. You know what I'm talking about? Some butter. <laughs> and just melting all the biscuits and just let it be soaked in that butter. And then the nice, thick sausage gravy. I'm not talking about just putting a little dab. Who hey, listen, a little dab won't do you. I'm not talking about a little, I'm just talking about bucket load. <laughs> I'm talking about just putting it all over it, then getting some salt, and then taking some pepper. You know what I'm talking about? Now me, I open up the lid, and I tab it out myself. Just put pepper all over it, and then just, oh. You know what I'm talking about? Oh, but how much more? Oh, listen to me. But how much more when we begin to talk about God and about His goodness and about His mercy? It's like, oh, oh, the Lord is so good. Oh, the Lord is so good. Oh, the Lord is so good. Elizabeth and Ruth Ann, don't make me dance by myself now. Oh. Say this with me. The Lord is good. And his mercy endures forever. The Lord is faithful. And his faithfulness endures forever. The Lord is mercy. And his mercy endures forever. But you know how it all starts? It all 
all starts with Jesus. And as I close, and we'll be back tonight, and I'm going to pray for some people today, but we'll pray for everybody tonight. Because the Lord wants you to encounter him. But before I close, I want you to understand something. It all starts with Jesus. Everything starts with Jesus. My Lord Jesus. Oh, my Jesus. The one who knew no sin became sin. The one who was led to the slaughter as a lamb and opened not his mouth, say not a word. Oh, my Jesus. Everything starts with him. So I went out of shame. But I want you to understand, when you get him, you get everything. When you get him, you get it all. And in order to have everything, I have to have one thing. Amen. And that is Jesus. And as I close this morning, I want to close with this. I read here not long ago. I read of a true story. <clears throat> and this is, I mean, this is, this is not a, a, I mean, it's a true story. I mean, this really happened. Then, years ago, during the war, during the Vietnam War, <clears throat> but it, this, this father and this had his son, and his wife died of a, of a disease, and very, very wealthy, very wealthy man. I mean, worth <clears throat> hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, probably into the billions to today. And so his wife died at a very young age, and so he raised his son, this wealthy man, raised his son. And they became very, very close. And <clears throat> they were into art. And they, his hallways in his mansion, his rooms, his hallways were filled with hundreds, literally hundreds of millions of dollars of art from Picassos and Van Goghs and Da Vinci's and all, you name it, it was there. So much so that this man's art collection in his home was famed around the world. Well, the war began and his son was drafted. And his son went off to war. And the thing about it was is that they became so close and his son became such a such, he, he, he knew more about art than the father. He, just, he could just talk about everything about the art. He just become almost an expert in, the, in, in art. Went off to war. And a couple years later, the army came to this man's door. And when he opened the door, he was met by two army officers to inform him the sad news that his son had died. And his son died saving a, another soldier's life. The man went into deep despair. Didn't, I don't, I don't know if he knew the Lord or not. But he went into deep despair, deep depression. And he just locked himself up in his room. And this went on for, for a few years. Had, listen, had, had his hallways and his rooms decked with the finest art there is had hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe billion dollars to today's standards, but yet couldn't bring him any joy, couldn't bring him happiness, couldn't bring back his son. And one day, it was Christmas Day, this man got a knock on the door, and he answered it. And it was this young man standing at this door, and he said, sir, you don't know me. And he had a painting. This man had, this young boy, this uh, young man had a, was a boy, this young man had a painting. And he said, sir, you don't know me. He said, but I'm so-and-so. I became best friends with your son. And he told me of all that your travel, your, how you and him traveled the world and collected art. He said, I'm the one that your son died saving. He saved my life. 
and I, I've wanted to do something, and I haven't known anything to do, but he, he told me of how you love Dart and how you guys would travel the world. And so he unwrapped this huge painting of his son. He wasn't a, an artist, wasn't a fine artist at all. But the man embraced the painting because it was his son. And he took and he hung it right in the middle of 80 million, 100 million dollar art collections. Right in the middle over the mantle. And when you walked into the man's art room, the very first thing you would see was this very amor am amorish painting of the man's son. Well, the man died. And word hit that the man died and that they were going to auction off the art collection. And the day came when they offered all, up the art collection. The, the estate was filled with dignitaries and, and art collectors and buyers of art from all over the world, stated, all over the world. And the auctioneer got up and the auctioneer held up the painting of this man's son. And he said, the man said, this will be the first painting up for auction today. And somebody from the, from the crowd hollered out, we don't want that painting. We haven't come for that painting. It's no value. It means nothing. Now let's get on with the, with the Van Goghs and the Picassos and start naming off all the artists. The auctioneer said it stated by so-and-so, the, the old man, it stated that in his will that this is the painting that's to be auctioned off first. So who will bid on it? Somebody else hollered out, somebody just bid something so we can get rid of it and get on with what we come here for, the real art. The gardener of the estate was in the back room. The gardener raised his hand and said, I'll give $10 for it. $10. Can I get 20? Can I get 20? Somebody else hollered out, just give him the painting for $10 and let's get on with this. Do I hear, do I have 20? Do I hear 20? Another 20? 10? 10? 10? Put his gavel down. Said, sold for $10. And people started to cheer. Now we can get on with it. The auctioneer said, this, this auction is over. People started, they being furious. What do you mean? We've traveled for all over the world to come here from all parts of the world. What do you mean? I represent so-and-so, and I represent so-and-so. I'm so-and-so. What do you mean this auction is over? The auctioneer said, the old man stated in the will that whoever gets the sun gets it all. Whoever gets the sun gets it all. Oh, there's a TV program for you. Whoever gets Jesus gets it all. All that God is, all that is of him and from him and represents him, we get it all when we get Jesus as our Lord and as our Savior. Just lift your hands. Lord, we worship you today. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. Lord, we worship you. And we magnify and we glorify you. Lord, you're so good to us. Lord, all of our days you've been so good to us and you've been so merciful to us. You've been so faithful to us. Lord, you, you've loved us so much. Lord, we worship you and we thank you. Lord, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Lord, you're so good to us that you sent your son Jesus, not only to give his life, but he went about all the cities and villages preaching and teaching. And you anointed him. And everywhere he went, 
He went about doing good and healing all that was oppressed of the devil. For you were with him. And we worship you today. And I thank you that not one person will leave this place as they've come. But before we move any further, whoever gets the Son gets it all. But you can't get it all until you have the Son. And before we go any further, with every head bowed, every eye closed, you've come here this morning. You say, Brother Richard, I used to be on fire, but I've grown cold. I used to be on fire for him, but I've grown cold. This morning, I want to rededicate my life to him. That you, I want to pray with you. If you're here this morning, you say, Brother Richard, I, I don't know if I, was to, if I was to die today. I don't know that I would enter into heaven and be, with, and be in heaven. I don't know that I'd be in glory. I don't know where I'd go. If you come there this morning, it starts with Jesus. When you make him the Lord of your life, then you get it all. If you've come this morning and you want to make him the Lord of your life, the Savior of your heart, you get it all. The last invitation, you're here this morning. Say, Brother Richard, I, I attend church, but the devil's been lying to me. Tell me I'm not saved. I, for whatever reason, for, you went through, had a mistake or messed up or got in a fight with a friend, whatever, had a divorce or whatever, but the enemy's lying to you, telling you you're not saved. But this morning, you want to make sure we're going to pray with you. All over this church, body and place, if any one of those three invitations apply to you to make Jesus the Lord of your life, to rededicate your life, we're going to make sure if any one of those invitations apply to you, just raise your hand right now. So, Brother Richard, pray for me. Just raise your hand up high. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Yes, in the back, sir, I see your hand. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Yes, sir, I see your hand. Yes, sir. Anybody else, raise your hand. Brother Richard, pray for me. Yes, ma'am, I see your hand. Anybody else? Thank you, sir, in the back. Raise your hand all over this auditorium. Brother Richard, pray for me. Pray for me. I didn't realize how good, just how good the Lord is. He's so good. I want to give him my life. Just raise your hand. Anybody else? Thank you, ma'am. Anybody else? Raise your hand. All right. Everyone look at me. I'm going to do just like I said. I'm going to pray for you. Those of you that you raised your hand on one of those three invitations, you raised your hand. I want you to stand up right now. Just stand up. I'm going to do just like I said. Now, come. Those of you standing, I want you to just come, come, come stand right here. You know, I just, I just come and stand. I, I tell you, Pastor Mark, I just got so much going over in me, especially just about faithfulness. You know, as we came in here yesterday and saw the workers, saw them working, no spotlights on them. It's not a glamorous job. It's a behind-the-scenes job. But I saw, saw them working. I just, even, even today... All I can say to you is this, and I feel the Lord just saying to me is that you need to understand every thing you do in accordance to your faithfulness to what God's told you to do, right down to just putting into the lights, that your faithfulness does not go unnoticed with God. And understand something, God doesn't war reward how big it is. God doesn't reward how glamorous it is. God rewards the faithfulness because He is faithful. And because He's faithful, it's faithfulness, Ruth Ann, that He rewards. Whew. Now those of you that are, that are up here, just come. Just come up here. Just, Usher, just bring these over here. Just bring them in line. Man, that's the power of God on you. Just come stand right here. What's your name? Do you come to this church, Gladys? 
Sometimes, I tell you, the power of God's on you. You're never going to leave the same. I want you to, congregation, just stretch your hands out to these that are standing here. Now, for whatever reason you're up here, whatever, to make Jesus the Lord of your life, to eradicate your life, or to make sure, just know for whatever reason you're standing here today, just know this one thing. You're leaving this house, and all is well with you and the Lord. That all is well, and you can rejoice that you're in Him. Amen? You're very sick. We're going to you have a disease. Well, the Lord's going to touch you today. Well, He's going to touch you today. He's going to touch you today. He's going to touch you today. You don't have to be. Now, those of you that are up here, I want you to just close your eyes. Just close your eyes. And I want you to pray with me. Congregation, you pray with us. Just pray this with me. Say, Dear God, I come to you. I believe that you are God. I believe that you sent your son Jesus to die for me. You said if I would come to you, that you would not turn me away. And I come to you now. I come to give you my life. I come to give you my heart. I come to make the decision today to serve you all my days. I believe that Jesus, your son, died for me on a cross. I believe that he bore my sins and he bore my sicknesses. That if I would make him the Lord of my life, that I would be saved. Jesus, come into my life. You are the Son of God. Be the Lord of my life. And I make you Lord of my life today. I make you Savior of my life today. And from this day on, I will serve you. I will live for you. I will walk with you. My life no longer belongs to me, but my life belongs to you. Thank you for saving me today and filling me and baptizing me in the Holy Ghost and the fire of heaven. Now, Father, in the name, now I'm going to pray for you now. Just lift your hands. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, the moment I have my hands upon you, the power of God goes right in you. Father, in the name of Jesus, that's it, ma'am. Never the same. Never the same. And the Jesus. <laughs> oh, yeah. The fire. Oh, yeah. that's, the, that's the power of God going right in you. Oh, the fire of the Holy Spirit. Oh, yeah. the free today in the name of Jesus. In the name of never the same, ma'am. Jesus. Whew. Never the same. Never the same. Jesus. Fire of the Holy Ghost. Never the same. Fuego. The fire of the name of Jesus. The fire of the Holy Ghost. The fire of the Holy Ghost. In the name of Jesus. The fire. Jesus. Never the same. Never the same. Never the same, sir. Never the same, ma'am. Jesus. Never the same, sir. Never the same in Jesus' name. Jesus' name. In the name of Jesus, you foul spirit of sickness and disease, I curse you. You come out of her now and you go from her and you be made whole. You live and not die in Jesus' name. Fuego. <laughs> oh, yeah. That is real right in you. I felt that leave me and go right in you. <laughs> Fuego. <laughs> Fuego. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuego, Fuego. Fuego, Fuego. <laughs> Fuego, Fuego. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, you're about waist deep right now. Fuego, Fuego, Fuego. Oh, fuego, fuego, fuego. Oh, mucho fuego. Mas fuego. Oh, fuego, fuego, fuego. Ah, oh, yeah. Bye bye. Fuego, fuego. <laughs> Never the same, man. Close your eyes. Never the same. Never the same. Jeez. Just name. Oh, yeah. Fire. Shoo, shoo. Aha. 
That's it. That's the power of God on you. It is. I felt it just go right in you. <laughs> What's your name? Renee? Bless you. Who'd you come here with, Renee? Do you go? You came by yourself. You go to this church? Never the same. I said, Holy Ghost on you not now. Oh, Jesus. Oh, yeah, there it is. It goes right in you. Jesus. <laughs> Never the same, Renee. You came by yourself. Never the same. <laughs> Oh, Rama, Sita, Rama, Kuta. Never the same. It's the power of God all over you. That's the power. That's the world I've been talking about. It's all over you right now. What's happening? You feel it? Never the same. Fire! Never the same, Renee. Come, come in. Yes, come in. I'm about to eat you. Come in. Come in. <laughs> Fire! Hey, come up on the carpet. Come on the carpet. <laughs> oh! Fire! Oh! Fire! Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Shariso roba ni devraba sita. Ha, ha. I want this whole row, this whole row, right here. Come, this whole row, come. I mean, where are you going anyway? Horisa, come, stay right here. Harisa, rabo, risata. Horaba, si Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fire! Ah, fire! Ah, 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 fire! Ah, 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 fire! Ah, 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 fire! 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 Ah, Oh! Fire, fire, fire! Crystal's husband? Fire, fire, fire! Fire! Oh! Oh! Fire, fire, fire! Fire, fire, fire! Shoo, 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 shoo. Fire! Lady with your hands up. Lady with your hands up, quickly, come here. See, when you're baptized in it, it goes everywhere. Come here. One, Sister Spitzbergen. Come here. Come here, you, come here. Come here, come here, you do. Neva, come. Come in, Nikki. Whoa! Flap, flap, pull, sala la moonsa. What's your name? Oh, oh, I feel the same way, Sister, Sister Nikki. Ah! Fire! Ah! Fire! Ah! Is this your niece? What is that? This is your daughter? That's your son. Boy, what's, your, what's her niece's name? Oh, this is your wife. Huh? Katrina. <laughs> Sister, come step up a little closer, uh, Katrina. Never the same. As I saw you today, just sitting in the service, ha <laughs> ha, fire. The fire of the, baba, of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Ah, fire! Ah, fire! Ah, 
Brasala, Nala Lava Sale Bake, Lava Sande Lelabo Fire, Safala Lobo Sala Lava Fata. Halapa Sukrita Sababa Fasande. So Sorry, if we run out of carpet, we'll put you on the concrete. Come on. Come on. Oh, the fire of God is burning in you. At never the same. Shalibru sakalelebo sata. Shatalaba sandeleba. Ah, the fire passaya. Safaya su. Salalam on paya to shufa. I can't help it. Don't want to help it. Ha ha ha. Oh, come here, Ruthie. Hold me. Ah, you can run fast now. Oh, wait till you run in the fire of the Holy Ghost and the purpose and the plan of God for your life. Jesus, fire. Never the same. Never the same. Sister Ruthie Polka Dots, come. Come, Elizabeth. Fire! Shakarabasita. Shalom. we we'll put you this way. <laughs> Fire! Shakalamusata. <laughs> we didn't forget about this section. Listen, most most church people who went to church in San Diego this morning have already left church, already gone to the buffet bar, buffeted, buffeted their bodies. Now they're at home, fell asleep on their lazy boy watching TV. That's going to change. I believe. So fire the Holy Ghost all over you. What's her name? You don't know? Oh, Jesus! Oh! Yes! We say yes! We say yes, Lord! We say yes! We say yes. Yeah! Oh! 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 Taste and see that the Lord is good. Fire of heaven. Ha, 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 ha. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Come here, you two. You two. Are you a husband and wife? Okay, come. I, I mean, I did. I, I asked. I learned to ask a long time ago. Come. Never the same. Ready? Ha. Fire. Fire. Shakaraba Sande Rabosata. Renee, let that bubble. Let that bubble. Koraba Sande Rabosata. Koramande Rabosata. That's called tongues. Koramande Rabosata. Go ahead. It's all over you. It's right there. Just speak it. Yeah, that's it. That's it. You got it. That's it. Speak it. That's it. You got it. Speak it. That's it. That's the Holy Ghost. That's tongue. Now keep speaking. Don't stop. Keep speaking. Yeah. Keep speaking. How? Keep speaking. How? Shikarapa Sabro Bomashata. This whole section, stand up. This whole section, stand. Everybody just stand. Everybody stand. Just join hands. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus, let the fire of the Holy Ghost fall, right? Now, 
oil in Jesus' name. Fire, fire, fire. Father, right now, let the fire, fire, fire. Oh, Father, right now, fire, 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 fire. Oh yeah, sister. Ha 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 ha. That's the fire of the Holy Ghost. That's the oh God's giving and doing. Oh God's doing a whole, never the same. Oh, you'll never be the same. Oh God's doing a whole new work on the inside of you. Never the same. Fire, 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 fire. <laughs> Oh, fire! Fire, fire, fire! Fire, fire, fire! Ha, <laughs> ha! Fire! Oh, Rapacita! The fire of the Holy Ghost! 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 Fire! Fire! The fire of the Holy Ghost! The fire of the Holy Ghost! Oh, the fire of the Holy Ghost! Ha, 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 ha! Ha ha ha! The fire! The fire! The fire of the Holy Ghost! Fire! 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 Ha ha! Fire, fire, fire! Oh! Fire! Fire, fire, fire! Ha 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 ha! Fire the Holy Ghost! The fire of the Holy Ghost! Fire! Fire! The fire of the Ghost! Fire! Huh? Let's go to the faithful sound people back here. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Fire. Fire. Oh, fire. Oh, fire. Fire. The fire of the Holy Ghost. Can't forget the sound people. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Fire. 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 Don't worry about the sound. Ha uh-huh. ha! Fire! Fuego, fuego! Fuego, fuego! Fuego! Mas fuego! Mas fuego! Mas fuego! Mas fuego! Mas fuego! Shakarabasa! Fire! 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 I tell you, bondages are leaving people right now. Sickness and disease is leaving people right now. People are being made completely whole right now by the power of the Holy Ghost. Ha 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 ha. Shakario saparianai. Ha 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 Hallelujah. I hear I hear it. I hear freedom. I hear freedom. I hear freedom. I hear freedom. I, hear freedom. I, I just gotta pray for this little this lady right here. I got come you right here. The pilot, come you right here. I'm pointing at you. Yeah, you just turned around to look to see what I was, yeah you Ah, let's come stand right here. That's the power of the Holy Ghost, all of whew, never the same from this day on. You'll never be the same. Fire, fire the Holy Ghost, Jesus. Hora. All sickness and disease is cursed. It's leaving your body. Diabetes is leaving your body in the name of Jesus. All fear is leaving you. That's gripped you is leaving you in the name of Jesus. Well, we don't, you know what, there's no such thing as an end. We just pick up where we leave off. We pick up tonight. Get on the telephones. Bring those that you know that need a touch from heaven. I'm going to hand this over to the Holy Ghost pastor. We might be just here a few more hours, so don't leave yet.
Be sure and hug everybody you pass. Uh, you cannot, you cannot pass by someone and not hug them. If you want to experience more of the love of God, participate with the love of God. If you're on the floor, you don't need to get up. But everybody, I want to encourage you, come worship the Lord with your tithes and your offerings, a part of worship that you want to be a, that you want to participate with. Because in the participation of it, in the participation of it, a miracle takes place. Amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Ha <laughs> ha. So come worship the Lord. Don't walk past anybody. Not hug them after that. You come worship the Lord and with your ties with your offering. Make sure that everybody you pass by, you, you, you hug them. You bless them in Jesus' name. <laughs>